Hello everybody and welcome back. This is EDS here bringing you part 5 of my Pokemon Heart Gold walkthrough. Thank you guys for joining me today on a wonderful Pokemon adventure. So, to kind of get out of the nitty gritty stuff, first and foremost, yes, I sound like crap. There's a reason for that. I am actually quite sick at the moment. Um, thankfully it is not COVID, however... It is a very, very bad lower respiratory infection that I have been dealing with uh, actually since the day after I recorded this video, but it didn't get worse. Hmm. So I'm recording this on the 29th of December, and I got back from visiting my family up in Carson, uh, where I finally got to see snow for the first time. And it was like in the 20s for most of the time I was there. And uh, while I was up there, I ended up catching a cold. Uh, I don't know what the fuck it is, but I also believe that I am somewhat allergic to my sister's dog Spike. So uh, I was coughing, sneezing, wheezing. I was choking damn near to death. But we were snowed in, so I couldn't actually go to a doctor to figure out what the hell was wrong with me. So I was only able to get uh, treated recently since I got back in town the other day. But I am bored and extremely depressed right now. And I feel one of the best remedies for that would be for me to play a Pokemon game. So I'm going to get a couple episodes of uh, Pokemon Heart Gold out until my voice fails me. Hopefully not that bad, but we'll see what happens. Also, for anyone who is watching this... It's probably been a while since I've pivoted them and uploaded this, but I will be uploading more regularly. I've already announced that on the main channel by now. Anyway, so this is the second gym of the Johto region. It is the bug type gym with its leader, I believe his name is... Actually, you know what? I don't remember what his fucking name is. Uh, Bugsy maybe, I think? That sounds about right. I could be wrong. Um, but the main gimmick of this gym is these little spider thingies. They go on a predetermined pathway, and in order to determine where they're going to get land, where they're going to end up, you have to, on the second part, deactivate the certain switches to make it go where you want them to go. Now, you don't actually have to fight this kid here at all. Um, in fact, it's, it was a totally optional encounter there. I think I'm actually gonna go with Pidgey for this, cause it might be better off. Uh, cause I don't, I doubt I'm gonna use Golem as a final team member, but I'll definitely keep it as a on the back burner type thing. Uh, but yeah, it'll follow this pattern. Then we're gonna get stuck straight into a double battle with these two twins here. Also, I'm just gonna take a second and get a swig of something to drink. Doctor told me to basically just stay hydrated as much as I can, so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm surprised actually Air Cutter didn't kill that Ladyba. Ladyba has good special defense, but I, I still assumed it was going to take it out. So deactivating that switch will let you deactivate this switch, and then you'll be able to go right to Bugsy. I'm Bugsy. I never lose when it comes to bug type Pokemon. Uh, I believe somebody uh, who is in a different region might have something to say about that. My research is going to make me the authority of bug types. Let me demonstrate what I've learned from my studies. A part of me kind of feels like within the lore of Pokemon that Bugsy uh, could in fact be an apprentice uh, to the bug trainer in the Sinnoh region. Oh, great. Thanks for just fucking ruining that idea. Yeah, Scyther is the biggest problem, and it is easily digging out with a rock type. I always recommend coming into this battle with a Geodude. It's the main reason I got a Geodude for this fight. Because I knew that Pidgey wasn't going to be enough to kill it. I mean, Pidgey's Air Cutter is good against the rest of his team. It's not really that hard to beat. But all right, so now we have received our second badge, the Hive Badge from the leader Bugsy. Next to Faulkner, Bugsy is one of the most forgettable gym leaders in the entire franchise. 
I never remember who this kid is until I'm in his gym, and then once I leave, I quickly forget who I was fighting in the first place. Oh. So, I'm actually going to try to... Okay, yeah, yeah, deactivate the blue one, that way you can go back. And then this one will just take you right back, so always go from the left and go up. Now, we are going to have to fight our rival. But I need to double check something. I don't think I actually use PK Hex in between videos like I said I was going to. Uh, yeah, that's... It is a modest natured Marie, but... I didn't give it any moves, so I don't think I did anything to it. Uh, I'll PK Hex later on uh, when I just... <coughs> care about it a little bit more. Anywho. So now we are going to be... We're, like I said, we're going to have to fight our rival real fast. As soon as we try to leave, there he is. Hello, cunt nut. Oh, let me uh, actually... I hope bringing the microphone a little closer to me it makes it a little bit easier for me to be heard without having to yell. I don't want to switch back to a headset mic. But I don't have a uh, a booming a boom stand for my blue snowball. Tell me something. Is it true that Team Rocket's returned? You beat him? Yeah, quit lying. Are you serious? Then let's see how good you are. All right, cunt nut. First of all, that thing's gonna die. Well, I was right. It did die. Oh, I see. There is a Zubath who needs to be cut. Or I can die. You know, there's that. Well, that was kind of BS. I don't have a single fucking revive. Of course I don't. I'm not at that point in the game yet. You know, I'm going to insult you and try to kill you with this thing. Yep, you're dead. Yeah, this was part of the reason I also always pick Croconon because... <sighs> Bayleaf is... Or Bayleaf Meganium. Great Pokemon. Absolutely worthless, competitively speaking. Or even... Just in-game-wise, it's not very good. Oh, with the way my throat is, I probably will only be able to push out maybe two or three videos at the most. <sighs> oh, wait. It has been more than 24 hours since I did the Pokeball thing, so... Just finished Pokeball, got the Friend Ball. Completely worthless. Has the same catch rate as a Pokeball, but it's it catches the Pokemon and has their base rate of friendship being like some number I don't remember. Okay, so this, in my opinion, is one of the dumbest roadblocks in the Pokemon games. Because that tree right there is a cut down tree. And obviously Gen 4 is the worst generation when it comes to HMs. Heart Gold and Soul Silver being no exception to this. Sorry, I'm moving the microphone again table there so this guy lost the frickin far-fetched huh <sighs> that they were using to cut trees down so as a result of this we are forced to interact with these far-fetched by stepping on these sticks and walking up behind them to make them go back to the owner I found one of them. The second one is the one that sucks. Well, first, let me go ahead and grab this item here. We got a revive. Could have used that a few minutes ago, but whatever. So let's go over here. So you can see it's facing this way. We're going to have to get a counter by a counter pee. Oh, God damn it. So we'll do it there. And since those sticks are out of its hearing range, it'll go that way. Hello, Metapod. Goodbye, Metapod. All right. Again, those sticks are out of its hearing range. These, however, are not. So what we'll do... Uh, let's see here. Okay, there we go. So I can go around here. And then sneak up on it and then it gets caught it took me like 10 minutes the first time I did that to figure out how to fucking make it work 
But we do all that just to get access to HM Cut. I don't think I have anyone in my party that can use Cut except for Ferret, who currently has Strength, no, Return. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna deposit something in my PC. Because I wanna hatch this egg. It's gonna be the Togepi. Uh, so let's see. We'll just grab this fucker and box Butterfree. Okay, so let's go over to the side here. We got cut. Uh, there we are. I never put HMs on my main on my main party members. I'd rather have two full HM slays dedicated to it than put HMs on the Pokemon I actually like using. Here in a second, we're going to meet another one of the Kimono Sisters. This right here is the Ilex Forest Shrine. It's a tribute to Celebi. I don't know if there's actually an event that was released for Harkle and Silserma that allowed you to catch Celebi, but I do know that you can do uh, you can do it in Pokemon Crystal if you were to do very specific stupid things. Uh, oh, there's the egg. Cool. All right. Oh, and it's female. Okay, what do we got then? Wait, did I pick Axis? No, I didn't. Oh, I just got really lucky with a female one. Anyway, this guy over here will teach your Pokemon the, or give you the TM headbutt or teach them headbutt. I don't remember which it is. Um, but I'm not going to bother with that. It's really only to headbutt these trees uh, to encounter specific wild Pokemon. So this is the second of the, Kimino, of the Kimono girls. Girls lost in the forest. She wants us to figure out if we could find a way to show her out of here. And our Pidgey, or whatever Pokemon you have in your front spot... Shows her exactly the way. Why she couldn't do that on her own is beyond me, but I won't speak ill of the stupid. Also, something over here. Yeah, Ilix Forest. I think the only thing in here that I haven't caught yet is Paris and Pineco. And Pineco you can catch by headbutting the trees. So, you know what? Let me just go ahead over here to the guy. Again, I don't remember if it, he teaches headbutt or he gives you uh, the TM for headbutt. So, let's see. Rat attack can learn headbutt. Get rid of Tail Whip. Okay, let's try that again. Get rid of Tail Whip. Alright. So you can teach more than one Pokemon Headbutt. So let's go ahead and just Headbutt this tree and see what happens. And a Noctowl! A level 7 Noctowl. An underleveled Noctowl. I've never actually died. I've never encountered that before. Normally it's Hoot Hoots. Yep, see, there you go. So apparently you can capture a level 7 Noctowl in this forest. That's something interesting I didn't know about. I know that you can also catch Pineco. I just don't remember exactly where. I'm gonna... Uh, no, I should probably weaken it a little bit. And that's enough to kill it. Never mind. I'm gonna see if I can get another Noctowl. Actually, never mind. Uh, over here maybe? Third time, who do it again? Uh, I'll just throw a Pokeball, Pokeball at it. I'll turn this into a Noctowl with PK Hex off screen. I'm currently not at a, at a point enough to actually uh, use a full six Pokemon yet. Because there happens to be like four other things I have in mind for team members. Pidgeot will probably not be my final member, but it will be a decent Pokemon to use up until I pick whatever my final flyer is going to be. I'm still debating on who that is going to be, so we'll see what happens. One of the undeniable benefits of the Generation 2 region is that there's an ass load of trainers everywhere to get some good level grinding in before certain gyms. And the third gym is the one that everyone has in my entire life has ever played Pokemon has told me horror stories about. And I have never once had an issue with beating them. It is, of course, Whitney we're talking about. The normal type gym leader and her annoying ass fucking... Miltank. Oh, I find this kind of cute. So apparently Lyra's, or uh, Lucas's, depending on who you pick, grandparents run the daycare here. And we run into her. And then they go ahead and we go into the grandma's house. The dialogue here is what I think is cute. Grandma! 
Let me introduce my friend. This is Kevin. Ah, this is your boyfriend? I see. Hmm. What? Grandma, what are you talking about? He just happens to live nearby. I know, I know. Since you brought him here, Lyra, you must be sure about his talent. That's kind of dumb. Right, come see us anytime. Well, I better go now. See ya. Oh, almost forgot. Here, this is my Pokegear number. You know you can talk to your Pokemon as they follow you? They do all sorts of things, blah, blah, blah. Take a note every time they do funny things. Give me a call. I'll show some of that with you. Grandma, don't say anything. We are both trainers. We are supposed to exchange numbers. That's all. <laughs> I find that really cute. It's just like like the grandparents know. Like the grandparents know that there's a little romantic thing between your character and the and you know, Lyra or Lucas, depending on who you who uh, what gender you chose. I like that. That's like a little cute thing. It's also something you see commonly in anime, or at least I do anyway. All right, I'll add you to my phone. Blah blah blah. Okay, can I hit this thing and get something that's not a hoodoo? Come on, and keep hitting the tree with your face. Right at time before you break your damn tooth. Uh, still nothing? Alright, fuck it. Alright, oh, but before I do anything else, actually, in the grass here, there is some Pokemon I want to capture. So first, I'll fight this girl here. I'll go a little bit over on this video, because uh, I want to capture a Drowsy. Uh, as well as a ditto and whatever else I can find here. Alright, so we got you at full level, so now let's toss this thing at you. And now we have a Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto, however, will not be what I'm going to be using to defeat the, uh, the uh, third gym leader. Also from its silhouette, it kind of looks like a baby Moltres. <coughs> and that's my cat yelling at me again. Anywho. So I'm going to go through here, and I'm just going to go ahead and capture capture this one right here since it just appeared in front of me. So come on. Get the ball. There we go. Alright. So this drowsy is important for one reason. Actually, was it a drowsy or an abra? Hold on. Let me double check. So in the department store, I believe it is, uh, there is a trainer who will trade you um, I think it's the department store. Let me double check. There's a person who will trade you uh, their Machop for either an Abra or a Drowsy. I cannot remember which one. I also don't remember which floor they're on. It's not that guy. Not that guy. Ah, it's this guy over here. Okay. Yep. Okay. So you do need to give him a Drowsy. So let me go ahead and just take the elevator back down. <coughs> All right. There we go. Now I'll go ahead back to the Pokemon Center. Which is luckily right next to me. Go ahead and take this. Now this right here is the number one reason I have never, ever struggled with uh, Winona's Gym. Or with Whitney's Gym, I mean. Because you can get a Drowsy in the route below... And come to the fifth floor of the department store to get yourself a Machop. That's always been my ace in the hole. Level up Machop to the point where it learns low kick. If it doesn't have it already, I don't remember if it does. Basically level it up to about level 20 or 21 through grinding. And then once you've done so, uh, just go ahead and fucking kick Whitney's ass. It's not that complicated. People like to make it complicated, but it really isn't. So we have Muscle. It'll always be female. It'll always have a lonely nature named Muscle and holding the Macho Brace. So from the get-go, it has Karate Chop and Low Kick. So from the get-go, it already has a good setup for it to use against Whitney's Pokemon. Now, I am actually going to PK Hex this thing because I want to give it a little bit extra added uh, ability here. So before I even go to the gym, we are going to go back to the Pokemon Center just so that I can save my game. So, thank you guys so very much for watching. If you liked what you see and you want to see more, please consider hitting that subscribe button, leaving a like on the video to let me know you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out my main channel, a down, link down in the description, and as well as my Twitter page and all that nonsense. And until next time, this has been CDS. Thank you for finding one video at a time, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care, everyone.